everybody. Happy Monday. It is actually Monday afternoon. I just got done eating lunch and now I'm bringing my dishes into the kitchen. So today I am going to finish pouring the silicone mold for my niece's birthday present. I was also playing around with some UV resin, but that was just out of me trying to test a theory of taking something that was matte and making it glossy because I love the way the design turned out for this particular um, item that I had poured a couple of weeks ago when I first started playing around with resin. Didn't quite go according to plan, so I have to figure out a different method of taking something that is matte and making it shiny again. Uh, another thing that I want to do this week is um, continue getting this room organized. Um, I actually did a pretty good job with getting everything taken care of on my to-do list. I just need to organize the office a little bit more um, and just do some pour resin pours. So I got this really awesome, uh, actually I'm gonna spin you guys around. I got this really awesome stand. Uh, it was actually a suggestion from somebody that I follow on YouTube. And I have it hooked up to this cabinet to where then I can do an overhead shot of you guys of you and show you guys me pouring the rest of the silicone into this mold. So I'm getting that set up. I wanna try and finish that um, before the light goes away. And then that way um, I'll let that sit and then I'll be ready to pour, um, take the wood out and then put the resin in and figure out how much resin I'll need to make this. It's gonna be a lot of resin I know, but you know what, it's gonna be worth it for what I have planned for that. Okay, so this is the mold of uh, uh, stuff that I use. It's the Mold Star 20T. Um, this is a one to one ratio. So I'm basically going to be taking this bottle and mixing it together with this bottle to create the, con the material I would need to be able to plug it into or pour it into the rest of the mold that I have. So I'm gonna mix this up and I'll show you guys what the pour looks like. actually really got a nice solid coating on top of it. I'm now going to let this set. It actually doesn't take very long for this to set up and then I will have a perfectly re uh, mold to make countless resin letter A's. Um, I'm actually, if everything works out to where I hope it works out for this particular gift, I'm gonna be adding this type of item to my website, uh, to my shop as a home decor item. So. I will bring you along. I'll actually get this product done this week. So I'm really excited to bring you along to show you the final results. And then um, I also like this particular silicone um, molding, um, mold making material because it comes out clearer. So if I wanna make molds down the line for other things that I have, I can color it and I can add my own unique twist to making uh, unique silicone molds that are uh, in relation to uh, 825 designs and then I also wanted to see uh, rep my brother's company Wildman Design Co. He is a woodworker. He ha makes amazing custom pieces. He's got a great local following. Um, he does have an Etsy shop and I'll leave a link down below of some of the home and decor items that he has that he makes out of wood. Okay cool. I'll bring you guys back and show you the unmolding of this particular uh, mold that I made for my niece's birthday present. but 
boy, does it look awesome. Let me show you. Okay, so here it is. There's going to be some things like along the edges here that I'm going to have to clean up a little bit, but oh, this is awesome. It's sturdy. There's a nice, nice uh, solid bottom on the bottom. Um, I might trim a little bit of this off, but I'll just leave it alone. But there we go. It is now ready to be poured. Um, I might, let's see here. I might, I don't know. I'm not going to do anything. But I have an idea of what I might have to do to the bottom side, which will be the front part of the mold. Um, there's going to probably be one additional I step I take after I take it out of the mold to make it nice and shiny and pretty. But overall, I am very pleased with the way that this turned out. So I am now going to start the plan for how I want this to be designed. I have to figure out how much resin this is going to take. I know it's going to be a lot, but honestly, it's going to be so worth it at the end. So... I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to pour. I'll show you guys that whole process as well as the colors that I'm going to go for and just really show you um, how fun and it is to pour a resin and to make a resin cast. So I'll bring you guys back. Hello everybody. Happy Tuesday. It is a little past six o'clock. I finished my shift today for my day job. And the weather has drastically changed. It's been windy and rainy and cloudy all day today. And I have some daylight left and the wind has drastically dried down, uh, died down. So I am going to work on something that I've been wanting to do, which is create a coaster, uh, a set of four coasters using, uh, and it's a mold, using silicone caulking and a silicone rubber mat. Now I have it set up ready to go, so let me bring you down and show you what I've done. Okay, so this is the silicone mat that I am sacrificing for this mold because this will allow me to make um, four coasters over and over again. Um, I drew up this template by using a coaster that I already had in my house. I literally put it in the center. I drew a squiggly line around it and there is my template. And then I copied this four times over. And now what I'm gonna do is use this silicone uh, caulking that you would use for like showers, um, that kind of thing. And I am going to go ahead and trace along the template line that I have here and create um, my border, which is when I pour the resin in, it was only gonna go to that silicone um, border that I'm creating. So um, I've done this once before. It was my trial and error. And so now I'm going to do it again and I'm going to add two rows of the silicone and then I'll show you what I'll do next. And this is going to be, um, I'll show you a little bit and then I'll do the rest in a time lapse. So let's see here. <clears throat> Got to do my little test. All right, give me a second. Okay, so I also wanted to mention too that I got this silicone caulking at a hardware store. I also got the little gun to shoot it up at a hardware store. And now I am going to show you guys how I do it. And I usually go pretty slow just so I can have a nice even uh, bead. And it doesn't have to be exactly the template. You can actually go deviate from that a little bit if you want to, but this for me is just a guide. All right, there you go. I'm gonna bring you in time-lapse for the rest of it. Okay, so that is what one layer looks like. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna kind of manipulate the silicone because I kind of want the edges to be not so circular, if that makes sense. I've already made this once and I didn't quite like how circular the edges were. So I'm actually just going to take a popsicle stick and play around with it 
until I like the edges. And again, I don't need the edges to be perfectly straight because I want it to kind of have that, that geode unfinished edge because it will help accentuate the next step of what I want to do. So I will show you guys this in a time lapse. up the the bead or the line that I created so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a second row of it to make it a, a to make the height a little bit um, taller so it look kind of looks like this right now I'm gonna add a little bit more to make it look taller that way I can um, have a good thickness for my coasters when I make it so I'm gonna bring you guys along for the time lapse for that and come back when I'm done <laughs> the little imperfections I like they're not exactly the same size the same thickness is uh, on point and so now it's a matter of letting this set I'm going to actually open up the window to let in proper ventilation because um, this stuff is a little stinky and then I'm going once this is set this is going to be my mold uh, that I'm going to use for this style of coaster I'm actually going to be making more than one style of coaster this is going to be one of those styles and it's going to be a four or an eight pack depending on um if 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 there is a demand for it and then um i will do a pour once this gets set so i can show you guys what it will look like ultimately but uh that's it for today so i'll see you guys uh on another day hello hello happy wednesday i have my gloves on and that means we are doing some resin pouring today the molds that I made yesterday came out great. They're ready to go. I factored in uh, how many ounces of resin I'm going to need. In fact, I actually measure my resin material in grams. How I factored how much resin I use per mold, I actually pour water into the mold. And then that water I pour into a cup and weigh it. And that's how I determine how much of the resin I'm going to need for each of my molds. For these coaster molds, I am going to need 90 grams of resin. I'm only going to pour one today just because I want to see how it turns out because, let me show you. The, I don't know if you can notice, but it looks like they've bubbled a little bit. Um, this is a very thin mat and they've bubbled a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour one to see if that affects the bottom of the shape of the mold of the mold when I pour the resin into it. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. Um, let me show you the colors. Alrighty. So our lineup, I have some clear resin. I have some resin with this really cool purple uh, glitter that is from Sirius Glitter. It's Dr. Pepper. I actually got this as a free sample, so I appreciate that. And then in this one right here, I have done Copper Mica with Gold Dust Enviro Glitter from Neutral Soap. It's like this really cool gold um, glitter. I've had this thing forever, and I love this stuff. I've used this in soap as well as my molds. And then in this kid right here is this really cool dark cherryish purple. It it's called I think the color is called black cherry, but it comes out really cool. All righty, so it looks like this one right here is looking to be the less warped of the rest of them. Um, let's see here. All righty, so I'm gonna move these guys out of the way to maybe make better light in here. And so what I'm doing is more of like a geode type design right here. I'm going to, um, 
I don't know. I'm just gonna go with it. So watch how I, watch how I pour. <laughs> So you can see those details. So what I'm going to do is periodically between now and when I stop seeing them, if there's bubbles, I'm going to take a heat gun to it and blow them out. But yeah, I am very happy with the way this popped out. Yay! I'll bring you guys back for the unmolding tomorrow. Alrighty, my work day is done and now it's time for the big mold and that is the A that I made earlier in this video. I am going to pour the first layer and now I'm going to do this in three layers. The first layer is going to just be a clear layer. The second layer is going to be where the majority of the design is going to be including the fairy lights that I'm going to add to this piece. And then the third layer is going to be a solid color so it's kind of like it's backdrop. Um, so let me bring you in to show you what the first layer will be like. Alrighty, here we go. This is the first layer and this is the clear layer. So what I'm going to do now, I've got it all pretty much out of this container is I'm going to get all the air bubbles out and then I'm just going to let this sit until I'm ready for the next one. And uh, let me double check to make sure that all of my edges are filled in. They are. Well, hello, happy Thursday. It is part two of the resin pour that I'm doing for the letter A. Um, I decided that um, I'm going to let the first layer uh, cure because I need to work on the configuration of how I'm going to place the fairy lights in this letter. And so I've done that already and I actually have it sitting off to the side. Um, come to find out, I'm glad I did it because I'll show you a picture of what I did um, here in just a second right now. And what I did was is I actually taped it down with washi tape in the mold itself just to kind of see how I want to and then how I wanted it and then I peeled it off and I have it sitting. I'll show you in just a second where I have it sitting. I'm, I'm using these rolling carts that I built and I have it sitting right here. So basically I am going to lift it out of there and place it in there when I start pouring the second layer. But bad news is I poured one of the coasters yesterday and it didn't cure at all. So I have no idea what happened. I did equal parts of the resin and hardener and it is still liquid. Here it is. I put my finger in it earlier this morning and it is liquid. So this is gonna be thrown away because this is a total crapshoot. But yeah, my first resin fail. Resin fails are definitely going to happen. So I am going to just continue forward and working with the A. Um, the A, I'm using a different type of resin I bought on uh, Amazon. It's uh, Dr. Crafty. I'll leave a link down below in the description. But the coaster resin I would have been using since day one. So I have no idea what had happened. Um, it's relatively warm in the house. I had done equal parts. So I'll have to do some research and figure out what happened to cause it to be still liquid to this point. Now what I'm going to be doing is working on the second layer of the letter A today. And I'm going to be mixing the resin and getting all the colors separated. And then I'm going to let it sit for a while, probably about 20, 30 minutes. I'm just going to keep checking it. And when it gets to a relatively, um, I say thicker consistency, I'm going to go ahead and pour it because the idea that I have for this pour is I want to do polka dots. So I want the uh, consistency to be thicker so that way the colors don't blend in together within each other as much. So when everything is all ready and set up, I'll bring you guys back and show you how that pour goes.
Let me show you guys all of my color choices. I am going to use Pixie Dust from Sirius Glitter. We're going to use Berry Mica, Cream Mica. Uh, then we've got Fuzzy Navel from Sirius Glitter, Sleeping Beauty from Sirius Glitter. And then I found this pink glitter randomly when I was going for, uh, looking for some other type of art supplies. So the theme is pink. And then I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna incorporate the silver. Um, it's got kind of like a pearlesque, but it's obviously gonna be kind of like a white um, in the mold itself. So these are the colors I'm gonna use in the mold. I am going to show you guys how I mix and get the color set up. So I do one part resin to one part hardener. I mix that up for three minutes and it starts off cloudy and then it will go clear and there will be bubbles. I don't even worry about that because I know I can do that with a heat gun to get rid of them. I am separating the color for the colors and I'm going to scrape out. That's just me scraping out as much of that resin as I can is probably the soap maker in me. And then I'm adding all of the colors and mixing those together. I really am happy with those two mica choices that I picked for the solid colors. They look so pretty. And in the video, they probably look peachy, but I swear they're pink. I swear. Alrighty, so now that everything is all mixed up, I wanted to give you guys a closer look of what the colors look like now that they're mixed in the resin. So this is kind of like a really cute pearly pink. I really like how that came out. This one is probably my favorite glitter. So cool. And then here's that pixie dust. And then here is the chunkier hearts. This one is like hearts and stars and, but it's got like this cool holographic tone to it. And then here is the other solid color I'm gonna use. And this is kind of like a peachy pink. So I think this will be perfect. Here, I'm gonna let these sit and thicken up cause they're super, super liquidy right now. So I'm gonna let them thicken up and then I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to start pouring this layer. That was the most stressful and nerve wracking 35 minutes I have ever experienced since I started doing this. It was, I was, I, I screwed up. I screwed up as a resin artist. I screwed up. And when I had mixed the colors, I had done it during work because it was slow enough for me to work and talk on the phone at the same time. And I wasn't, uh, you know, it was just five simple colors that I was mixing together. And when I was keeping watch of the, of the mixture and seeing how thick it was getting, it was, you know, I was checking it like every 10 minutes. And then I got that one phone call from that one customer that ended up taking a lot longer than I had anticipated. And it got too thick and it started to heat up and that just accelerated the curing process for the resin. So I'm in there and I'm just hustling along, hustling along, trying to get all this resin in and I didn't get it all in because it got too thick and it was too gloppy. Um, when I started putting the fairy lights in, they weren't going to stay in place. And so for 35 minutes, I was stressing out and getting everything in. But when I put the washi tape down, I realized, okay, now how am I going to get that washi tape up? And um, before I poured the third layer, I um, went in and... Uh, just kind of was playing around with one corner of the of the mold and I figured out how to do it with the heat gun so I got it off and there was no major hiccups because I knew the third layer was going to cover it up 
and I was feeling better. And I also tested it out a couple of times, turning the lights on and it looked so stinking cute and the way in which the colors merged but didn't like blend together. Oh, I'm really excited to see how it comes out. Okay, so this is what I didn't use when I poured it because I waited way too long. So in Resin World, who's ever watching this and you're cringing, girl, I know, like look at this. It was just so gloppy, like, that's how much I of that color I didn't use. We've got this one here. I, I didn't use a bit of that. I don't know if you can see the line right there. And then this one right here, like, oh, it is the biggest lesson, honestly. But I adjusted myself and I went into the third layer and I'm gonna use what, I'm gonna use what I lost in the second layer and put it into the third layer. And I'll show you guys what I did there right now. I decided to go for this pearl layer with a touch more of the pink and didn't have enough so I poured a second layer and I added a little bit more pink and really liked how it came out. And the third layer is done and I feel so much better. I am excited to see what this will look like when I unmold it tomorrow. I'm probably not going to touch it until my lunch break tomorrow just because I want to give this proper time to cure, proper time to harden up. And uh, I'm really excited because I've tested the lights out a couple of times when I was in the second layer as well as the third layer. And oh my gosh, I have a feeling through all of this heartache and all of these nightmarish moments during this process, it is going to be so worth it. And I am so excited. I cannot wait to bring you guys in and show you what it looks like when I unmold it. Oh my gosh, it is out of the mold. I have not flipped it over yet because I wanted to do this with you guys on camera. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Here we go. Oh, that's okay. I was expecting this to happen because the last step in this whole situation is going to be adding a clear coat of resin to bring the sparkle out of this design. So that's okay, we have one more step. I am not freaking out. So I am actually gonna go ahead and get some resin ready because we're gonna pour some resin and make this all nice and shiny and beautiful. I have some clear resin here that I mixed up and I am going to pour a thin layer on the top to bring out the sparkle and the shapes of each of the design. And I'm going to do a uh, time lapse for you guys. Oh my gosh, look at that design. I am in love. I'm totally doing this upside down too, but oh, this is exactly what my vision was. You've got the sparklies, you've got the pixie dust, you've got those solid colors. Oh, I am truly, truly happy with this. Oh, yay. Look at that. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to go this route. Oh, stand up. Oh, I am so happy with how that came out. Oh, I'm in love. Hello everybody, happy Saturday. I am so happy with how everything turned out with the letter A. Um, I decided to pour one more layer in the back end of the letter A to make it a little bit thicker uh, so it can stand up straight on its own. And also I feel like when you pour something and you don't fill it all the way up to the very top of a mold, it creates this like little divot in the resin. So I decided to make that all even and I think it will also help with it standing up. I'll post pictures on my Instagram so you guys can see what it will look like in a home decor type situation. Um, but I'm actually gonna call it uh, for this vlog for this week because 
Uh, Saturday is going to just be quality time with my husband. Even if we're not doing anything, it's just going to be quality time with him. And then tomorrow's Easter, so I want to be lazy. I'm going to do a Zoom brunch with my family and then get some grocery shopping done to get ready for when my boys come back to me next week. So that's it. I felt like it was a pretty productive week and I'm definitely going to be making more of these letters. Um, this is definitely going to be something that's going to be a regular item in my shop. And so I'm going to get ready to start making more letter molds, acquiring the wooden letters to create my silicone molds. I'm actually thinking of getting into making my own silicone molds, not just for my own personal use, but for sale too. So I'm kind of like some more ideas are starting to pop up for 825 Design. So um, you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you on next week's vlog. Bye for now.